I'm going to be working with the following materials to sew this dress. The main fabric I'm going to be working with is a pink wool material which has a pink matching lining. I got 2 meters of the main fabric and 1 meter of the pink lining. I also have this black and white tiny checkered wool fabric which is sort of mid-weight and it's a similar weight to the pink one. I got 1 meter of that as well. I also got a meter of interfacing which I'll be using to stiffing my collar of my dress. I also have four buttons that are black and white. I have some matching thread in pink and white. My fabric scissors, baby scissors and some pins. I already have a pattern tutorial for all of the patterns that I used in this video and I'm going to be linking it down below if you haven't seen it already. So make sure to watch that before coming back here to see how I sew everything together. So I went ahead to lay out my pink fabric because of how the pattern is made i wanted to pin down everything in the way that i wanted to cut them because some of the patterns were meant to be cut on the wrong side so there is like the left and there is a right and it correlates in such a way that everything is on the right side of the material if that makes sense so for the back you you are meant to cut it on the wrong side of your pattern as well as the other side of the front which is the side without the armhole so i'm just going on here to cut out this side of the front which is the side that has the full collar the side that has a full armhole and a full shoulder so i'm just cutting it out like so going around this edge and going around the neckline which has the lapel extension in front going around the shoulders and i'm just cutting out my sleeve just ensure that you cut out your sleeve in the direction that works with the side of the armhole they are going to fit it into so here i'm just cutting in my notches at necessary points because this dress has a few panels and it just make your life easier if you cut your notches and mark which side is the wrong side of the fabric so i went ahead to cut my revere collar in this black and white fabric because i thought the contrast to the pink was really really nice i also went ahead to cut the facings which is sort of what you would see when you fold the lapel outside and that's what connects to the rivier collar so the facings for the left and for the right hand side of the front i cut in this black and white fabric Once you've cut out your facings and your collar, you would need to fuse them with your interfacing to make them stiff and stable and ready to sew. So these are all of my panels here. You can see my front for this side of the dress and this facing has already been fused on the wrong side of the fabric. I use a type of interfacing that just sticks on the fabric when you press it down with an iron. I just find that using that is a whole lot easier. I also fused the lapel extension up until halfway for the left and for the right hand side. So that sort of lapel part is double fused or is really stable. I also fused my collar pieces, both of them. I have my full sleeve which is in the main material on this side that has an armhole i have my back pieces left and right and i also have all of my lining pieces cut out here on the right side of the screen so for my backs my front as well as my sleeve Once you have all of your pieces cut out and ready to go, it's actually time to sew. And the first thing we'll be working with is to join the front panels together. So we have a whole left and a whole right hand side to connect to the back of the dress. So I took the liberty to pin the side panels together so I can join them up along these seams here on a one centimeter seam allowance using a normal straight stitch on my domestic machine. I just worked with normal tension and I stitch of about nine so it's not too tight and it's not too wide so it doesn't make the fabric gather together when you're done. Next up we will be joining our back panels. So we have a whole back to attach to the front panels of the dress. So I'm just pinning together the center back seam like so. I'm just grabbing some pins, joining along notched points at the beginning and at the end. So once I take this piece to my machine to sew, I know with one continuous stitch, I'm going to be joining up these back panels to become one. So I'm just sewing on a one centimeter seam allowance using a normal straight stitch, remembering to secure my seam with a back stitch at the beginning and at the end. So once I get to the end, I'm going to give this a good press to open 
open up the seam and to make it nice and smooth on the back and then i can connect this to my front but at this point i realized that i forgot to sew in my darts so when i tried this on later on in the tutorial i discovered that the back of the dress was too loose so remember to sew in your darts or taking the excess through the center back seam and that way the dress will fit you nice and lovely on the back now that that's out of the way we can join the side seams of the front to the back i'm just matching them together along these edges and then we can sew up the side seam of the front to the back on the left and on the right hand side as well as the shoulder of that side that has an armhole and a sleeve so i'm just sewing on a one centimeter seam allowance using my regular straight stitch on my machine with sort of medium tension and stitch length remembering to do a back stitch at the beginning and at the end to ensure that my seam doesn't break at any point after that is done i'm going to go ahead and press all of my seams to relax the stitching and this is what my dress should look like at this point i'm really happy with the outcome so far it's looking really nice and really cold the next thing i need to think about is actually sewing together the collar pieces so you can fix that into the neckline of the dress so i'm going to get my collar pieces together as you can see i've already fused my interfacing so this is ready to be stitched up i'm just going to put right sides together and then i'm going to pin up the edge that i actually want to stitch because the way reveal colors work is you sew up one end turn it inside out give it a nice press and then you fix it into the neckline of your jacket or your dress so i'm just pinning edges together like so and i'm going to be starting on this corner on the right down the bottom and up the side just ensure to mark the exact point that you are going to stop because that is where it's going to be connected to the lapel on the front so i'm just sewing up this way like so turning at necessary points on a one centimeter seam allowance because this fabric is black and white i decided to change the thread to white if you have black you can use that as well because when you press this inside out and the seam is sort of pressed flat it will show on the outside if you use a cotton that doesn't match so i'm just cutting off the corners on this end as well as on the other side and i'm going to snip this edge which is where it is going to sort of link with the lapel on the front i'm just turning this inside out very quickly and i'm going to give this a nice press with some steam to relax all of the seams to relax all of the edges so it looks really nice and clean along the straight side and along the corners as well because the side that is open is the side that we're going to fix into the neckline of the dress so now that the color is done we can grab this piece and we can join it to the dress along the neckline and i'm just going to open up the dress like so so we have the side that we want to work with the side we're going to be connecting this collar to is the side that actually has the lapel so i like to start this out by putting the collar and this lapel extension like so and then marking the exact point where the revere collar sort of starts off and then i'm going to pin that beginning point together and then i find my shoulder notch for the revere collar and for the actual dress which is where the shoulder seam is i pin those points together and because we're sewing together two curved angles there's going to be a little bit of easing in so things match up together so i'm just pinning up the rest of the revere collar along the slanted back seam because that's how the dress design works until we get to the very end where i put my last pin so once I'm happy with the placement and everything looks really nice and neat and ready to go, I'm going to take this in my machine and I'm going to be joining the collar from the beginning, which is the front, all the way to the end, which is the back. I'm sewing on a 0.5 seam allowance because when it's time to join this particular piece to the lining, I can sew on a 1 centimeter seam allowance and to cover up this particular seam that we have here. So now I'm just sewing to finish up the rest of this scene, joining the collar onto the neckline along the back. So once I get to the end, I make sure I do my back stitch to secure my seam. So I just wanted to show you guys how far I have come. This is what the blazer dress is looking like. Uh, I am fairly happy with the outcome, especially with the collar. 
because that is something that I've never tried before sort of like uh, a Riviera color that goes from that side and travels all the way back down the center back like this I've never tried that so that looks really good the reason why it's a little bit baggy is because the the mannequin is a little bit tinier than me so my body should fill that up but so far so good there are just a few changes that I would like to make the first one being that I'm going to be adding shoulder pad in here I'm going to be adding a shoulder pad in here to give the shoulder more structure and um, I think it will just make the sleeve sit nicer into the armhole I think I will also be making the the sleeve or the armhole a little bit wider I'm going to just trim it in by about one inch and then level that back into the bottom of both sides of the armhole that opens it up and that brings in the sleeve in up until where you can see where the shoulder pad is so that's how far I want to trim this this is very optional it's just like little details that I want to make to ensure that the blazer dress turns out really nice and it fits me the way I want it to next up I tried this on and I discovered that it was um, it wasn't fitted to my body as much as I would have wanted it to be especially around the hem so around this side here around that side there that flares out I'm going to be taking it in by one inch from the waist all the way down to the bottom on both sides so now I'm just going in to reduce my shoulder by 2.5 centimeters or one inch. I'm just marking that with a chalk and I'm going to draw down gradually a curved line to the bottom of the front and the bottom of the back. So once I go in with a scissors, I just cut along this chalk line. I'm using a pink chalk, that's why it's not very clear, um, the chalk line that I just drew. But I'm just cutting out the excess bits that I don't want. And once that is done, I can go ahead to work on the fit along the hem of the dress. So for that, I turned the dress inside out so I can mark on the wrong side and pin as well. I'm reducing by 2.5 centimeters on one inch as measured as mentioned earlier on and this i just pinned flat so once i draw in the chalk line it is ready to sew so i'm pinning across like this and i'm going to be drawing my chalk line from around the waist down to the bottom so instead of having a wider a line fit at the bottom it comes in a little bit towards my legs and that's the fit that i really wanted so i'm just doing that here drawing in my chalk line i'm going to repeat the same on the other side of the dress so i would be able to sew out the excess and trim that off as well so i repeated the same on the other side of the dress as you can see and i'm going to be shaving out that extra one inch that i don't want i just put this on to test i realized the front was a it was really really white i'm going to be taking out along this side it was about one inch at the top and i just sort of tapered that into the waist of the front as you can see here so i pinned down the collar that doesn't have this on the side that doesn't have a sleeve and i also pinned in the excess on the back which came as a result of not sewing in my darts don't be like me guys please sew your darts else you have the same issue so on the other side of the front i'm going to be taking it in by a little bit so it just fits my body nice and snugly so now i'm just sewing in all of the points that i wanted to get rid of extra measurements along the side of the front along the center back and a little bit from the other side of the front so everything fits me nice and smoothly After all of that sewing and trimming, I went ahead to try on the dress again to check for the fit and I cut out any extra measurements I didn't need and gave the dress a nice press. So next up, I'm going to be sewing my shoulder straps, which is what sits on the side that doesn't have a sleeve. And I'm just sewing on a one centimeter seam allowance using a normal straight stitch to create sort of a tube that I can turn inside out, press flat and then fit into the dress. So now that we've stitched that up, I'm going to be getting a ribbon that is about one inch wide and I've attached a safety pin to one side of that ribbon. I'm going to be passing this through the middle of the channel that I just created nice and slowly until I get to the other end what you want to do is 
you want to put a pin on this sort of side of the ribbon take out your safety pin and we're going to stitch up this side here like so and you see why in, in a couple of seconds so once that is all sewn up i'm going to be pulling this tube inside out using that ribbon that we just stitched on this side of the tube so just push the beginning inwards like so so it's a bit easier to pull the ribbon out and then just continue to do this until it gradually comes out like this this is a technique that i actually learned from my husband so babe thank you once that is all done i'm going to go ahead and cut off the extra ribbon i don't need and press this flat ready to be fixed into the neckline of my dress so i'm pinning on this side like so i already checked when i tested on the dress the exact point i wanted the strap to be so make sure to do so when you make yours test it on yourself or on your client because of the way the strap is made you can't really adjust it once it's been sewn in so if you have to cut it shorter make sure to do so if you have to cut another one to make it longer make sure to do so before going ahead to sew this into the neckline of your dress because this strap is not adjustable like you know the bra straps that we have so once you're happy with that it's time to go ahead and attach the sleeve i'm going to pin together my sleeve so i can sew up the side seams i'm putting right sides together and then i'm going to pin up the side seam from the beginning all the way till the end and i'm going to be sewing up this seam here so i'm sewing on a one centimeter seam allowance using a normal straight stitch doing my back stitch at the beginning and at the end and then after this is all sewn up i'm going to give it a nice press to make it nice and flat ready to go into the armhole of my dress so i'm going to go ahead and pin my sleeve into the armhole of the dress on this side and i'm pinning the sort of side seam of the dress to the side seam of the sleeve i'm pinning together the shoulder point of the dress to the shoulder point of the sleeve and then i'm going to turn this inwards like this so i can pin the round nature of the sleeve into the roundness of the armhole like so the sleeve is a little bit bigger than the armhole so what i did was i used the loser stitch to sew up a gather on the top of the sleeve head and this creates a really nice puff on top of the sleeve and that just added to like the personality of the dress so if you don't want this you can make pleats or you can just make your sleeve less rounded so it doesn't have as much ease to fit into the armhole of your dress so once you've done your gathering or your pleating then you can go ahead to sew your sleeve into the armhole of the dress i'm just sewing this on a curve so i know once i get all the way to the end of this stitch my sleeve is fixed right within the armhole of my dress so i'm just finishing off this particular seam with my back stitch to secure it in place so i know i can go ahead and fix my shoulder part to give my sleeve more structure if your sleeve is on the right hand side make sure to use a shoulder pad for the right hand side because the shoulder pad comes in a pair so you want to use the side that correlates with the side that has a sleeve so once i've pinned that in place i'm going to be sewing this shoulder pad into the sort of this top of the sleeve and i fitted it in such a way that the shoulder pad sits sort of right on top of the sleeve so once that is all sewn the main dress is actually done and it's time to sew the lining so the first thing i'm doing here is i'm transferring my dart using a pin from the pattern onto the actual fabric i'm using pins to sort of puncture the points the four crucial points of a dart and i'm passing that from the pattern onto the main fabric and then i'm going to be lightly lifting the pattern and just with a chalk marking that point where the pin hits the fabric so i will do this for the four points and then i would pin together the dart in such a way that i have my two midpoints pinned together so i know that's where the fattest or the thickest part of the dart is and then i'm going to pin the beginning and the end so because this side has a tiny opening at the top i've pinned together that part because i'm going to be stitching it up and then going into the main dart for that side of the front so i went ahead to pin the other dart for the other side of the front as well as the backs because i forgot to do that for the main dress so i made sure i sewed in my dart for the back 
lining this time around just remember if you take out any excess from your main dress remember to do that on your lining as well else it wouldn't really sit or match in such a way that it looks nice so because i took away one inch from my main garment on the side along the hem and on i reduced the shoulder width by one inch as well just make sure to take away any difference from your main dress repeat that on your lining as well so i'm just shaving off any excess that i don't need from the shoulder and from the side as you can see here so i'm just going to repeat this for my front and for my back at any point that is necessary before going ahead to sew all the panels i also pinned the side seam of my sleeve lining and i went ahead to sew up my darts so as you can see i've already sewn up the back darts and i'm just pinning together the center back seam of the lining pieces together so once this becomes one piece after sewing i can attach it to the side seam of the front panels so i'm going to be sewing this up on a one centimeter seam allowance using a normal straight stitch to connect my back panels to become one and then i'm going to be giving this a nice press so it's nice and smooth and ready to be fixed onto the side seam of my front lining so once that is all done make sure to press your seams for your front for your back and for your sleeve as well because you want it to look just as good on the inside so next up you need to join your facing to your lining along the sort of like side so for the left hand side you join your left facing to your left lining for the right hand side you join your right facing to your right lining for the front so you have two main pieces for the front inside of the dress so next up i'm going to be putting together my front and my back lining along pinning them together along the sides and along the shoulder as well so this can become one whole lining piece that we can join together to the dress along the neckline and along the hem so i'm going to be taking this to my machine and i'm going to be sewing up the shoulder as well as the side seams of the lining piece so it becomes sort of a whole dress piece on its own that would cover up all of the seams on the inside of the dress when it's all done so i'm just sewing here on a one centimeter seam allowance using a normal straight stitch joining my lining pieces together along the side seam and along the shoulder remembering to do my back stitch at the beginning and at the end pressing and ironing is going to become your friend if you want your garment to look really nice and clean on the inside and on the outside i've also pinned the sleeve into the armhole of the lining like we did for the main dress panel on the outside and i'm going to be sewing the sleeve into the lining along this edge like so it's just like what we did for the main dress you pin the sides the top and then you sort of ease the other curved ends of the sleeve head into the armhole so i'm just sewing gently until i get all the way to my end and then do a back stitch to secure my seam and give that a nice press before going ahead to connect my lining to my dress on the inside so you would need to flip the dress the other way around so you see the right side and then you take your lining and put the right side of the lining against the right side of your dress and then you pin along the front so from the bottom along the front where your lapel is along the shoulder the front the back to the other side of the front down the other front panel or the front lapel and to the bottom so when you sew you start from the bottom where the facing is sewing like a three centimeter seam allowance and then you turn and sew upwards the front on a one centimeter seam allowance so with one continuous stitch you join the lining onto the dress along that bottom the front along the neckline all the way to the other side of the front so when this is all done you turn it inside out and then you have the front of the dress nice and clean and once you give it a nice press it should look really really nice so i'm going ahead to top stitch my lining to the seam allowance on the inside especially along the side where your revere collar sits because of how the revere collar folds to the back i want to ensure that the collar stays inside and then it folds outside really nice and neatly without the lining bulking out in the way that i don't want so i'm just sewing that gently in before going ahead to trim my corners where sort of 
that the lapel points are and then when you turn this inside out you should not have so much bulk along this point like so so i'm just pushing out this end like this and i'm going to be pushing in my sleeve lining into my main sleeve so i can join the sleeve hem of the lining to the sleeve hem of the main dress so i'm just pinning together this point and i'm going to pull that out again through the opening that we have and i'm going to be pinning both sleeve hems together so that's of the lining and that of the main dress so when you sew this particular seam here and then you pull the main sleeve of the dress outwards it's it's a nice and clean seam on the inside so I'm going to take this in my machine and I'm going to be sewing the both hems together so we have a nice finished hem on the inside as well as on the outside of your dress so I'm just finishing off this seam remembering to do my back stitch at the beginning and at the end and I'm sewing on a one centimeter seam allowance using a normal straight stitch so once that is all stitched up i'm going to be pulling out the sleeve as you can see here and because you've stitched them together along the hem the lining is pulled out automatically as well so this is what it should look like with a nice press it should be really nice and smooth on the inside so next up we need to close off the hem and i'm just turning this inside out and i pinned the hem of the lining to the hem of the dress because the main dress was longer by three centimeters that's why it looks wider at the bottom here i used to be able to sew this in such a way that they both connected but i think i did something different this time around if you guys know what i did please let me know because i honestly can't remember but i decided to use this method for this time around just remember to leave like an opening of about three to four inches so you can back this whole piece out and you'll be able to finish off that hole by needle and thread so that hole that we've left open is what i'm just pinning flat like this to the hem of the dress and i'm just going to use a needle and a thread to close up the hole without that hole you won't be able to turn the dress inside out so you can hide all of your seams inside and i'm just using my needle and my thread to lightly stitch the whole clothes i'm using pink thread as well so that it looks really nice and really clean even after the dress is done so just take your time doing this it takes a bit of time because you want it to look really nice and professional so do not rush it so i went ahead to mark where i want my buttons to sit after i was done closing off my hem and my buttons are spaced by four inches from each other so from the very first button to the second one is four inches apart and i decided to put my buttons on the side that doesn't have a sleeve and i put my buttonhole on the side that has a sleeve i did that because when it wraps around that way it just looks nicer i don't know if that's sort of like the professional way to do it but i decided to work with it that way so i've stitched on my button and i stitched on the lapel in such a way that it stays put and it doesn't like constantly flap open so you can't see the thread on the outside but you can see a bit of the thread on the wrong side so next up you need to fix your buttonhole i have a separate tutorial where i show you how to fix a buttonhole using my domestic machine just ensure that your buttonhole is wide enough for the buttons that you have so it works to allow you to open and close the dress Once you fix your buttonholes and your buttons, the dress should be complete and this is what it looked like. I styled it with this white one shoulder top underneath because I didn't just feel comfortable showing as much cleavage but you can style it however you want and I really really like how it turned out. It looks really beautiful, it fits comfortably as well. I just need to find where to wear it too but I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up, comment all of your thoughts, suggestions and ideas down below and i'll see you guys in my next one bye